the kill, Tony. Give it up for Tony Hitchcliffe. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, make some fucking noise. Yowie, motherfucking wowie, Brian Redband's here, everybody. Hey, everybody. And so are we. Holy moly, how exciting is it to be back in beautiful, wet, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, soaking, so fucking wet. wet, breezy, cold, snowflakey. It's exciting to be here. Are you guys ready to have a great, warm, cozy night here in the uh, the dark, dark layers of the Rex Theater? How exciting is this? Shout out to uh, someone who made a special Pittsburgh bucket. Look yeah. at that, a little Picklesburg uh, Kill Tony bucket. I think Pickles that's in Bird. reference to our last show here where uh, the Pickle Festival was happening. That's, oh, that's, how, right. that's how cool. For those of you listening around the world, that's how cool Pittsburgh is. They have uh, pickles. Yeah, Corey made that for us. Yeah, shout out to Corey. Fuck yeah. Where you at, Corey? You out there? Yeah, yeah. fuck yeah. There you are. A little antisocial artist over there just sitting <laughs> in the dark. I'm over here. Um, so this is exciting. We're back. When were we here last? Was it this year? It was this year, right? That's how powerful you guys are. You got us back twice in one year. Many cities angry. Some cities we've never been to. Denver, Colorado, (laughs) Miami. uh, Every city in Florida, really. We have avoided Florida. As you should, right? Right. (laughs) I mean, you know, it's a thing. But Pittsburgh somehow has gotten us twice. Very exciting stuff. A lot of the Hinchcliffs are here. A lot of my family from Youngstown, Ohio. Shout out to you. Somewhere in the middle of the room. And yeah, life is good. I mean, we've been doing it. We've been traveling everywhere all year. Things are exciting. And, uh, you know, I'm afraid of of the crime. We were in Youngstown last night. We survived it. We had a lot of fun on the crime-ridden streets of Youngstown. And the good thing is that if anybody steals your wallet, it can turn into a weapon if you have a Ridge wallet. We have... Ridge wallets ourselves. They are made of uh, titanium and carbon fiber, and I use it as a weapon. If anybody (laughs) ever tries to steal my wallet, I just dink right on their forehead, and uh, they're unconscious. Yeah, these things are great. You can't do that with your old leather wallet. (laughs) Try to hit a guy in the head with a leather wallet, they steal your fucking wallet. (laughs) Not with Ridge wallet. It's uh, rock solid. It's uh, got 30,000 five-star reviews, and it's a minimal front pocket wallet that's designed to streamline what you carry every single day. Day. I think a lot of us all have that big ass wallet that just you sit on. Definitely have a big ass. I yeah. don't know about the hey, wallet. Come on. <laughs> come on. But you know, we all have that wallet and we're all sitting on it. It hurts your back when you're driving. I don't know how many times I've gone on like a road trip and be like, why is my back hurting? And then pull out this monster wallet. It sucks. I, I, we've, uh, I've been rocking this wallet now, this Ridge wallet, for about a month now. I love it. It makes you, 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 don't, you don't have that much, you don't have to carry that much, you realize. You don't have all these extra. You still cards. got a lot of cards I in mean, there. You got your uh, th- Dominoes and Wendy's <laughs> and all that. There's a lifetime warranty if you love it and free returns if you don't. There really is a and- Wendy's card. Holy <laughs> shit. It comes in titanium, carbon fiber, aluminum, and over a dozen different styles and colors. You can get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash killtony. That's ridge.com slash killtony. Use the code killtony. The link is in the description. You can get 10% off your order. Great gift for the Christmas season, the holiday season. Get it for people that you love. Ridge Wallet. Use the code killtony. Save 10%. You guys ready to start tonight's episode or what? We are live here, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've done this before. The Rex Theater, a beautiful venue. We're packed tight like a jar of pickles. This is very exciting. As with all of our road episodes, we will go guestless tonight. However, there is a band on this show, everybody. It's a lot of people's favorite parts of the show. I mean, let's face it, a lot of the listeners hate us, Brian. You and I, they fucking hate us. I know. Uh, but they love the band. They are likable. They're goofy. They're silly. Every single episode, they commit to being different characters. We never know what they're going to be or what they're going to do exactly. Maybe it's the return of some of our favorite characters. Maybe it's the debut of brand new characters. So let's see what they are tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins and Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. What is going on here? 
Here they come. I see glowing sticks of some kind. Whoa. <laughs> what, what, what is this? Oh my god. I have no idea what this is. All right. Wow. All right. We get it. They're having a sword fight. It appears as though Jeremiah is wearing a dragon's head with a green sword and glasses. Uh, what are you? Ever heard of live-action role-play, Tony? <laughs> I guess I've sort of heard of that. That's what you are? My name is Douglas, and my dragon's name is Draconio. <laughs> Douglas, and your dragon's name is... Draconio. Corleone? Draconio. Wow, I'm going to call you Douglas. Um... That is my human name. We'll accept. And then back here, clearly we have Harry Potter's Mexican sister. Ha um, <laughs> ha ha. Good one, Tony. <laughs> What's your name? The name is Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> uh, and don't okay. let this armor fool you. I am a mere mortal. Wow. No, I could tell. My goodness. You guys traveled with this shit in bags? From Los I Angeles? I have flown with weirder shit in my bags. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, we have uh, uh, live action role playing characters um, Douglas and Kevin. <laughs> and we have the old Picklesburg bucket. We have Brian's soundboard. Oh, yeah. Well, there we go. The Picklesburg bucket. You guys know how it works. A bunch of people signed up before the show. Um, maybe it's someone's first time Maybe it's their last time Maybe they're one of the local uh, comedians That are trying to get a big break Get discovered here on the show Get a following for themselves You never know what's going to happen I pull your name out of the bucket You get 60 seconds uninterrupted On that front microphone right there You know your time's up When you hear the sound of a kitten That means wrap it up then Or else you're going to bring out The angry cultural district bear <laughs> Is that the gay part of town, the cultural district? That's what they told me. I don't know. I asked the crew here. It was a bunch you of tough know. guys pretending like they didn't know where the gay part of town was. Like, dude, I don't know where the fuck's the gay part, dude. I hang out by Heinz Field, bro. Go Steelers, dude. Um, so, yeah, that's how it works. After that 60 seconds is up, we ask you a bunch of questions. We talk with you about your life. Try to find out what might be more interesting about you. Answer the questions honestly. Don't try to be a silly doofball then or else we can't find out anything about you and we have nothing to work with. There's only one way to get to this stage. It's the stairway right over there. You can come up this aisle way and across. You can come up that aisle and across. But the only way to get up there is that way. Do not climb up on this stage. If you climb up on this stage, you don't get to perform. It's a physical rule based on insurance and safety. You guys get it? You ready to start this fucking show, huh? <laughs> Pittsburgh, I just, I feel like you could do better than that. You guys ready to start this show tonight or what? All right, I was right. I knew you could do better than that. All right, well then with that said, your first comedian getting an uninterrupted 60 seconds tonight goes by the name of Levi Weinstein. Wow, right there in the front, here he comes. Here he is. One more time for your first comedian of the night, Levi Weinstein. Hello? Oh, there we go. What's up, everybody? So, I'm super excited to be here, and here I am. So, um, I don't know if y'all remember, but we were all in sixth grade at one point. Oh, oh, and is the, mic, no. is the mic okay? Nope. Here you go. Use this one, buddy. How about we start you over? How about one more time? No, that's not going to work. Is it the cord or the mic, you think, sound guy? This is fucking great, by the way. <laughs> Just fucking great. This is exactly what the fuck I like to happen when I come to a fucking venue and sell a bunch of fucking tickets so that the fucking main thing doesn't fucking work. Uh, you think it's the cord or the mic, sound guy? Cord? Cord? Okay, well, why don't we just switch the cord? Why don't we pretend like none of this ever fucking happened? Here A we go. smoke no, monster good. is forming. It's all good. We're fixing it. How about a hand for the amazing staff here at the Rex Theater? We're doing it. We're doing it. Who gives a shit that it's a podcast? Who gives a shit? This is perfect. This is all going to work out. This is how it happened. This, ha 
This co- thank you, Jeremiah. Fucking thank you. Really, less of that forever, permanently. Thank you. Hello? Jesus I thought it was Christ. helping, but apparently very, uh, Douglas failed once again. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, all right, check it, dude. Fucking check that thing. Check, check. Ladies and gentlemen, we're starting over from scratch. Put your hands together for your first comedian of the night, Levi Weinstein. What's up, everybody? Again, for the second time, let's see if this one goes a little better than before. So, whoa, sorry about that. Um, I just, so, sorry about that, my bad, my bad. So, sixth grade, you're in like social studies class learning about Indonesia or something, and it's like, you know, halfway into the first semester about, and the best thing ever happens. Bam! It's the fire alarm. You get to go out of class and do whatever the fuck you want. So, you know, like, honestly, fire alarms were, like, really lit. Like, you get, to, like, you get to leave class. Everyone leaves class at the same time. You, like, meet up with your boys. You know, you, like, take out your little Game Boy and, and the little connector, you know, before all, all the Bluetooth stuff took over, all the, all the Nintendo DS. You play some Pokemon Blue. You battle with your boys. You know? Thank you. All right, there you go. Levi Weinstein choosing to go with some of that good old fire alarm uh, material. Can we get the broken cord back up here? Yeah. Maybe we could switch that back. Schulberg is here, ladies and gentlemen. He has arrived. He has started. Oh, he's being (laughs) christened. (laughs) Wow. Fuck yeah, Levi. That was definitely, uh, you brought more <laughs> brought more embarrassment to the family name Weinstein than anyone else I've ever heard of before. <laughs> My goodness gracious, look at you. Look at you. It's good to see Fuller from Home Alone all grown up here. I uh, wonder if you still wet the bed. How's it going, Levi? First time doing stand-up? First time doing stand-up. Look at that. There you go. There's the, the go to the first time. That gives you some excuses there. Uh, welcome, welcome. How old are you? I'm 24. 24 years old, and uh, your first time doing stand-up. What do you do for work? What, uh, um, what, what, what would a guy named Levi Weinstein do? Let me guess, law school? Yes. <laughs> You're goddamn motherfucking right. So uh, you're born and raised here in Pittsburgh? No, th- I, th- I actually flew up here for this. You flew from where? From uh, South Florida. South Florida. Never heard of a wine scene from Florida before. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. So uh, that's where your family lives? Yes. South Florida. Miami? Um, I grew up in, in Miami Beach, but I live in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. What made you move to Fort Lauderdale? Uh, it's where my family moved in sixth grade. You still live with your parents? Yes. You've always lived with your parents. No, I went to uh, I went to college at FSU where I lived, uh, not with my parents for four years. Right. Okay. Can we just clarify? Nothing is wrong with living with your parents. <laughs> 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 A real live action reenactor, Douglas. Is. Live action role player. Role player. <laughs> All right. I will write that down. Mm. Get it right, bully. (laughs) (laughs) Role player. Did you call me a bully? (laughs) Nope. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Levi. Uh, So what else has been going on with your life? You seem like the kind of guy that has some hobbies, right? You like to golf? I actually don't like to golf at all. Uh Uh-huh. What do you like to do? Um, Well, Like to play parcheesy or something like that? (laughs) No, I'm not a big board guy. Uh, I'm not a big board game guy. But, like, right now I'm in between, like, relationships. So I've been, like... Me I, as I, well. I just... <laughs> I, <laughs> Levi, like, I think you and I are going to get along quite well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in between relationships. Yeah. What, do you, what do you mean by that? Are you, so, you, like, um, have you ever heard of BDSM? Do you know what that is? Of course. Yep. Yes, it's the prop comedy of sex. <laughs> so, um... I met I met this girl on um, Hinge, it's a dating app, and uh, we started texting a little bit, and like or messaging, and the messages turned into texting, 
And it, it was like normal texting at first, but she sent me a message of uh, Mickey Mouse's face. So I was like, oh, that's my face when, um, insert funny, relevant thing here to what we're talking about. Then she sends me a picture of Minnie Mouse. And uh-huh. I was like, oh, like, okay, whatever. Then she says, that's my safe word. I'm like, oh, bruh. So, like, wh- what, what it f- turned into was her sending me pictures of all of her toys. And, like, you know, we, I was like, fuck it. Like, I've never done this before. YOLO, I'm down. Like, I'll see, I'll see what's good. She was like, did you say YOLO? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, uh, let's check in with Douglas over there. Can even I, though he's in the middle of a story. But go ahead, Douglas. Yeah, can I just say that your vernacular does not match your body type at all? <laughs> Very good. Okay, keep going. So then you said what? So she asked, she's asking me to come over, and I'm like, you only live once. So I go to... <laughs> Why didn't you just say YOLO Fucking that time? Keep because, going. Uh, just let him go. Let him go. He's still in the middle of the same story, guys. Keep so, going, Levi. Keep plowing through it, you fucking idiot. Keep I, going. So I went to her house. She lives, she lives not with her parents. And um, so, like... Her house was 40 minutes away, and I knew that I was going to sleep there because it was already, like, 10 p.m., so I was like, do you have any food? It's hard for me to sleep if I'm, like, hungry. So I picked up some challah and some eggs. Leave it to a Weinstein to make this a a two-and-a-half-hour production. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Long story short, I'm not into BDSM. I was like, like, it it got weird. And The fuck do you mean, long story short? Did you just graze over the sex part of this story? You're telling us about the fucking no, bacon we, we and eggs? No, we didn't have sex. Minnie and she, Mickey? She wanted to have sex with me, and she put, like, a whip in my hand and wanted me to, like, whip her feet and Wait, stuff. Are you a pussy? Why didn't you do that shit? <laughs> well, uh, like, see, I, I, I was doing it for, like, a minute, but, like, it, I just, I did not get, like, ho- like horny or hard at all. I was like, yo, yeah, this is sure, weird. sure, you fucking play along for a little I bit. I was trying. It was oh, weird. What's your problem? What are you talking about, Levi? So you're whipping her feet for a minute, huh. and then you say, what? Okay, so I'm on the bed, and, like... You're on the like, bed. Yeah. Where are you on the bed? Like... Where so we like, last I'm left our hero. Bed, like, he was on like, the bed. Like, he is whipping feet. She's, like... She's, like, this on the pillow, and I'm, like... And I have like a horse whip, and I'm like, like shut I'm asking her question. Up. You shut the fuck up now and forever. You, you, and you. Shut up. You keep going, Levi. So, um, like she has. So, I had a horse whip, right? But that wasn't my only option. She had something called a flogger, which like I've never heard of before. Uh-huh. But like it, it's like a handle with a bunch of weird tassels. Uh-huh. And I was like, eh. so I grabbed the horse whip, and I was like, ask. Was it? Oh, yeah, I came up with a game to play with her. The Ooh, game was, game. how well uh, do you know Levi Weinstein? And I was like... This was your idea? Um, I should, I'm going to get off my knees. Um, no, yeah. no. Um, like, the game was my idea, and I was essentially asking her things about me. And, like, if she got it wrong, because I was, I was asking really hard questions, I would just, like... Tell but, you. like, five minutes later, I was like, I'm not feeling this. So I got off the bed. I was like, I'm not feeling this. And then she was like, you want to watch Fifty Shades of Grey and see how this is done right? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Jesus. God. Yeah. So we watched Fifty Shades of Grey. At the end of the movie, I'm like, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. So, so and you then watched like, that whole fucking movie? Okay. <laughs> no. Fuck no. We started watching it, and, like, I honestly wish that I had, like, a studio audience because, like, I was basically shitting on every single scene. And, like, I'm like, yo, like, fast forward to the good parts, which included, like, just this dude basically beating the shit out of some woman, which is like, bro, like, oh. Yeah, like, we you know like how you shit? feel about that. Yeah. This, okay. Yeah. So, But you we, never had uh, sex with her, so it was more like Fifty Shades of Gay up here. There you go. <laughs> Heck yeah. Wow. Ooh. 20 hit points for Douglas. Incredible. Fifty Shades of Gay. Yes, Joel. Tony, if this story drags on any longer, I might have to slay it. (laughs) All right. Just play the drums, bitch. Okay. There you go. There goes that one. That's one in the hole. All right, Levi. So uh, what is your type of a dream sexual situation? What's the most experimental thing you've ever done? The most experimental thing that I've ever done. Doggy sexually. style? Oh, no. Um, like, I got, like, a little, like, um, like, okay, so my, my ex-girlfriend, like, she, or, uh, whatever. My ex-girlfriend, like, she wanted to do, like, butt stuff. 
And like, I'm, I was like, okay, like I'm fucking. Hey, yo, I was also into it. I was also like, fuck it, like, like I've never done that before. I'm fucking down. But right. like, like her butthole was like a little bit too tight. So I got like a like a butt, like a little butt plug for her, and like it was like it wasn't big enough for a, like a, for it to like expand the butthole. So like I just kind of slipped it in, and just like you know, it was just kind of there. It that's fell the, and in? that's the mo- what it fell in. I nah like. Uh. Got it all lubed up, and then just like. So what's your point? That's what you do with a butt plug. Well, yeah, that's that's the most butt. sexually experimental thing that I've ever done. You put a butt plug in a girl's butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God, Levi, you poor thing. This girl probably would have done so much fun stuff with you if you just would have whipped her feet for a second. <laughs> this is crazy, Levi. So how? That was the only time you ever hung out with her. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, we see each other at school sometimes, and I'm just like, hey, can I walk away? Law school? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Wow. You got, what type of law are you studying specifically? Land use. Land so, Which use. is uh, development of properties. Uh-huh. Yeah, Man, fun that, stuff. That makes sense. Is your, your dad in a, lo- a lawyer, too? Uh, no. What does he do? Dentist? He's, a, he's actually, no, he's actually a, um, he, he's actually a writer. Uh-huh. What does yeah. he write? Like, um, he writes... Uh, poems that he self-publishes. My God, we've spent so much time with you. Well, yeah. I don't know why you keep on asking I'm, this guy I'm, questions. Yeah. I'm shocked. I'm <laughs> sh- I didn't really... I've asked him less questions than I think I've ever asked anybody. It's just his answers are seven minutes long. Seven. Especially with you hitting every button and Douglas fucking jumping in with Fifty Shades of Gay jokes that uh, we covered on episode 45 of this show. But Sometimes it's Throwback Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Levi, I mean, congratulations on your first time uh, d- attempting stand-up comedy. Um, I, think, uh, I think God was trying to tell us something when he cut your sound from the very beginning. <laughs> I think he knew what was to come, and uh, good luck in the future, man. How do you feel that this went? You're smiling. You seem like a happy guy. I'm happy to be up here, finally. Come to Miami, please. We want you. You were great at the West Be- at, at the West Palm Beach Improv. This is what the we comedians in Miami will be like if we come there. <laughs> um, hopefully not. All right, there he goes, Levi Weinstein, ladies Thank and you. gentlemen. <laughs> what an interesting start to the show. Is everybody? That was it has begun. Exhausting. Yeah, it was. Oh, poor guy. This chick wanted me to do stuff that I've never done before, and I'm like, get out of here, lady. <laughs> it's a missionary position or nothing at all for me. God, she Levi. was so down to fuck. She showed toys and everything. Yeah, what a bozo. What would you think? You were going to whip her feet all night long, yeah. you fucking idiot? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. All right, this looks like a fun name. Let's see what happens here. Put your hands together for Charlie Steps. Charlie Steps. Here we go. Oh, here he comes. Look at that silhouette in the darkness. There's movement. The anticipation in the room. You could cut it with a knife. This is exciting. Here comes Charlie. Steps up the steps. Comes from a long line of steps. Here he is. One more time for Charlie Steps, everybody. So I found out that PFA does not mean pretty fucking awesome. Um... (laughs) A district court judge does not send you a piece of paper telling you how awesome you are. Uh, You're probably wondering what I did. I PFA'd my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend. What is awesome about that is I no longer have to dodge beer bottles, fists, and I can masturbate anytime I want. Uh, So when the cops serve you a PFA, they give you about 10 to 15 minutes to grab your stuff. And in that 10 to 15 minutes of grabbing her stuff, she decided to pepper spray my fleshlight. (laughs) <laughs> but the joke's on her because I checked it first with my dick. <laughs> uh, I can only masturbate with Frank's Red Hot. That's it. Thank you. Charlie Steps. Hell yeah. Getting laughs, working the audience, executing jokes with beats and timing. There was definitive starts and ends of your material there. Welcome, Charlie. How long you done stand-up comedy for? First time. First time ever. Look at that, Charlie Steps. Congratulations, Charlie. Heck yeah. So, uh, what you been doing with your life up until this point? 
Working, video games. What do you do for work? Uh, I have a small cleaning company. Put that s- mic right next to your mouth. Small yeah. cleaning company. A small cleaning company. Yep. You, own, you own the company? Yep. How does that start? How do you start a cleaning company as a white guy? I only know how Mexicans <laughs> do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? How did how did that happen? Was your dad a cleaner as well? No, everyone that works for me has papers. Oh, okay. That sounds suspicious immediately. Uh, <laughs> looking more like Alexandra Ocasio Cortez by the minute back here, Joel. I'm just warning you right now. This is getting but to run for Congress back here. Uh, so. How many people do you have working for you? Just three. Real small. Real small. Yep. What types of uh, places do you clean? People's houses or commercial? Uh, you know Mario's two doors down? Nope. Well. <laughs> I know three doors down, though. Yeah, uh, yeah I clean bars. Uh-huh. Clean bars? Bars. Fuck Restaurants, yeah. Restaurants, bars, offices. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Charlie Steps. I like your fucking style, bro. What do you like to do for fun? Uh, play the drums. Whoa. How long you been playing drums for, Charlie? On and off 10, 15 years. On and off 10 or 15 years. Oh, wow. Kevin taking the walk over here. Look at this guy go. It's a long walk to that green. Oh, shit. Wow. Well, Charlie, I mean, you're, you're from here in Pittsburgh? Yep, 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 right a lo- he's a local. It's Pittsburgh's own. Um, why don't we have a Mexican drum off? I don't know. I mean, it's risky business this early on in this show. Sometimes we reach a climax and we cha- we're chasing a dragon for the rest of the episode. But luckily we have Douglas here. He knows what chasing a dragon's like. Right, Douglas? Yes, sir. <laughs> Charlie, get on back here at this drum set. Now, it's a pretty simple set tonight. Uh, for some reason, um, it, uh, the drum rental company gave us uh, basically four little drums there. Um, <laughs> is there anything else you want to hit or anything? Is there anything else we can give you? Are you going to be able to make it work with this set? Joel's going to have the same size set. How do you feel about this? Your mic's right there. Yeah, I can make it work. Okay. Well, Charlie, let me, uh, let me explain it to you and some of the audience that might not know. I know I have a few relatives here that uh, don't ever support my show in any way, but uh, they know how to cash in on a free guest list ticket if anyone in the world does. Uh, so let me explain it, if only for them. There's a thing on this show called the Mexican Drum Off where there's a chance that someone pulled out of the bucket that knows how to play the drums can become a permanent cast member on the show. If they have a better drum solo than the house drummer, Joel Jimenez, they become the newest drummer on the show, which means, guess what? You used to have a small cleaning company. You got to move to Los Angeles, California, the greatest city on the planet Earth to uh, be with us every single Monday. This Monday, we have Theo Vaughn on this show. The Monday after that is a top secret, very special 420 episode for episode 420, even though episode 420 was technically two nights ago in Columbus, Ohio, the second greatest city on Earth. And uh, um, so you have a chance to be a permanent member of the show and pass off your small cleaning company onto your next of kin. However, I must warn you, Charlie, Joker. no one has ever won a Mexican drum off before. Uh, he's undefeated all time. However, you have a chance here, and you seem very confident right now. You can use as much of the stage as you want. You could do anything comedic that you want on top of your solo. Lord knows Joel will. He said Joel has been quoted as saying he's willing to die up here on this stage before losing a Mexican drum off. You guys ready to do this shit? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, defending for the first time ever, Pittsburgh's own Charlie Steps. Is that it? Yep. All right, Charlie Steps ending it there. 
Ending it there with a lost drumstick. All right, Charlie. Uh, maybe uh, maybe go sit on that stool right over there. Can, uh, or maybe he, you, you can s- join Douglas, always looking for friends. <laughs> there you go. Here, join Douglas over here. Go, come stand next to Douglas, Charlie. Yes. And uh, I guess uh, with no further ado, I present to you undefeated all-time in Mexican drum-offs. This guy started as a, a regular drummer for the band. He started saying things into a microphone. We all fell in love with him. Pittsburgh, I present to you the one and only Joelberg Joel Jimenez. Oh, here he comes. I see it. He's coming. Oh, my God. What does he have? What's he got here? Oh, he's got a fruit salad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why has he got a fruit He's got salad? a fruit salad in the purple deal, though. Oh, oh my God, he's eating fruit. He's got the white dildo from Texas on his head right now. This is I thought I'd start out by eating fruit before I beat this fruit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> eating fruit before beating fruit. Ladies and gentlemen, he's making some adjustments to the drums. He's got both of his classic dildos on him. He's undefeated all time. One dildo on the head, one on that giant fucking potato sack. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Kill Tony's own Joelberg Joel Jimenez. He's going out to the stage. Hold on. Wait a second. What's he doing? What is he doing? Oh! Backflip. Oh, here it comes. He's sucking his tail. Oh, oh, my God. He just... Oh, what is... It? Oh, a handspring. The handspring. Oh, he's having sex with his bass drum. Oh, my God. What's he doing? Oh. Oh. He just hit the cymbal with the purple nail now. Oh, <laughs> get the fuck off my oh stage. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's out of control. Wow. My goodness. Incredible performance. The classic backflip off the bass drum. The handspring. The sucking of his own purple dildo. He has detached the dildo from the strap on oh, apparatus. Now he's, a little baby he's hitting where the dildo used to be. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have to ask, how many of you have Charlie Steps winning this Mexican drum off? Wow, wow, wow. How many of you, how many of you have Joelberg Joel Jimenez winning, huh? Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh wait. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, he's gotta take the deal now off his hand. Oh, look at that. Oh my god. A work of art. Wow. Well, Charlie, you gave it your all. Back to the small cleaning company for you. There he goes, Charlie Steps, everyone. Be careful going down there, Charlie. Oh, my goodness. Charlie just got sent to the motherfucking chocolate factory. He got sent to the cleaners, dude. (laughs) Wow. Incredible. How about one more time for Joelberg Joel Jimenez, huh? Where'd you get the fruit salad from? Jeremiah, what are you doing over there? If the show's going on, you don't need to just keep playing the saxophone behind everything. It this is literally, you've been part of the show for like 300 episodes, and we've been telling you this. Uh, there was still clapping, so therefore I... Yeah, just let the, let, the, be... let the listeners hear the claps. We don't need to hear your fucking great kazoo over there, all right? <laughs> so let the show breathe a little bit sometimes. Catch your breath. I will retrieve into the (laughs) hog's cave where I came from. (laughs) It's okay. I'm used to evil lords seeking battle with me. 
I will prevail as the white knight will always. <laughs> An evil lord. All right. Pull another name out. Make some noise for your next comedian. This is where the band will play. Sean Freefeld, everyone. Sean Freefeld. Oh, here he comes right from the front. Oh, he's... <laughs> Jeremiah is not playing now. <laughs> ah! <laughs> One more time for Sean Freefeld, everybody. How's it going? I'm not used to this as a first time, uh, probably one-time only thing. Um, but I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, since I'm from Miami, that your city sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> it's wet. It's cold. Hear me out. Hear me out. Listen, listen, listen. I'm from a place where we have beaches, beautiful people. You guys are white. You're pasty like Elmer's glue. You look like Elmer Fudd. It's fucked up. It's all terrible. <laughs> okay, okay. On a different subject. On a different subject. On a different subject. All of this, all this technology, all this technology's been crazy recently. People, uh, people use everything that's voice activated to activate. <laughs> it's terrible. All right, all right. Over. Wow. Good lord, Sean. My goodness, maybe work out your wacky tech jokes before you turn on heel on the city next time. Uh, my Probably God, you're like been. you're like Colby Covington if he didn't know how to fight. Yeah, yeah. What did you expect to happen? Yep. No, I, I have no I, I have no fucking idea. This is not my forte. Wow. I came here with some schmuck who loves the show. My God, do, and, you, uh, do you hate everything, Sean? No, Why no. are you so angry? No, no, no. Not at all. Not What's going all. on, buddy? Are you okay? Okay, guys, relax. It's all right. We know you're it's angry. It's a lot. It's a lot. You know, being up on a stage is not an easy thing. I've done it before for music, never for comedy. What have you done musically before? I, I make rap music. I rap. You <laughs> rap? Oh, come yeah. on. Come on, guys. I mean, I'm sorry. Hey, hey. I know we all hate hey. this guy, but don't you want to watch him rap a little bit? Come on. You need it. You want a beat? You want to wait for the drummer to come back? I'll or you want to do it? I can go a cappella. I'll take a beat. Okay, then let's do it a cappella. You go a cappella. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the most hated man in Pittsburgh, <laughs> Sean Freefell, doing a little a cappella rap. I'll try to keep this clean, maybe even funnier than the stand up. <laughs> from the 305. I'm actually from the 954. But. Sean, no one gives a fuck. Are you going to rap or what? The fuck? Are, what are you talking? What are you doing? What are you covering? Ludicrous's right. area codes right, over right. here. Get the fuck out of here. All right. I think it's time for a girlfriend, but I'm too embarrassed to tell her that I'm 24 and still live with my parents. I know I got a girl pair. It's apparent, but I got so much love for her and I don't want to share it. So I took her on a date, then another and another. I introduced her to my little sister and my brother. I wanted to know that she's the bread to my butter, the salt to my pepper, and I love her like no other. I wrote her this tune so that she would see that she and me go together like peas in the pod or trees in the park. Want to hug her tight till I squeeze and she farts. That's just a little joke for all you kids at home. Hope you never have to feel like you is alone. Because you're not alone when you play this song. Somebody, <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing. Sean, you guys are awesome. Sean, you are literally as good at stand-up comedy as you are at rap. Uh, apparently. apparently. That's incredible. You rap in front of audiences, or is it in the studio? or Just one time. Just it's, one time. It's or at Macy's during the holiday season. <laughs> I what, fucking worked at a Macy's. What, you actually work at a Macy's? I, I worked at a Macy's doing something called seasonal floor recovery where you take shit off the fucking floor and put it back on the rack. Oh, my God. This audience hates you so much. That's okay. That's okay. Wow. My yeah. goodness gracious. This yeah. is incredible. Amazing. <laughs> wow, Jesus. It's good. I love that. The, that is the... Representing the city, the the world's deepest voice gay man. Uh, Welcome to Pittsburgh, bitch. bitch. <laughs> Jesus right. Christ. That guy wants to take you to the cultural district, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Teach you a fucking lesson. He, he, wants, he, he, wants to, he wants to shove your pickle in his asshole, bro. Uh -huh. You ever been with a man before, Sean? To the what? To this? Y you ever been with a man before, sexually? With a man before. No, no, never no. been with a man What's before. your love life like? You have a girlfriend? No, no girlfriend right now. No. no. When's the last time you had a girlfriend? 
Uh, about a year and a half ago. You hate women as much as you hate Pittsburgh? No, not at all. Love Let's women. check in with Douglas for a second. Um, uh, I'm not very good in front of people, but I think I could out freestyle this guy. Oh! <laughs> I love this idea. Douglas, you are, you are clearly a very shy guy. You uh, haven't even cracked a smile up here tonight. Um, you've, never free, you've never freestyled before, right, Douglas? Am I correct? Never in my life. Wow, never in his life. This is very exciting. Would you guys like to see Douglas freestyle rap for the first time ever? All right, here we go. For his first time ever, ladies and gentlemen, antisocial uh, role player Douglas. Is this, is this my tempo? <laughs> Whenever you want, any way you want it, Douglas. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Pittsburgh, repping black and yellow, about to take down this idiot, this dumb fellow. He's rocking these skinny jeans. He's trying to spit mean, but you don't know where you at, bitch. You in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all fight you like a knight, like every night, and the flow is so tight, and I'm so white, and I got these glasses about to whip your asses, and I'll go straight up to a maid, and I'll be like, damn, girl. <laughs> Man, you don't come at Pittsburgh like that, because guess what? Pittsburgh snaps back. Oh! <laughs> so go back to Miami where the heat is on and go get on your gay man thong. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You walk in the beaches while I take your beaches. <laughs> <laughs> Slurping up the ice cream. Now suck down peaches. Peaches is the name of your boyfriend, cuz. <laughs> you suck dick like nobody does. Oh my god. Black and yellow for life, bitch. Whoa! Oh my god. You silly Asian. Sean, you just got bodied by a dragon. Draconio. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, Sean, I mean, you came up here. You did just about everything as backwards as it gets. You, uh, you turned the audience against you right from the beginning. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'd love to know what that tech joke was going to be, um, but uh, we're going to keep the show moving along. How about one more time for Sean Freefeld, everybody? <laughs> you guys want to boo him? Boo this man. There he goes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Douglas. Douglas riding the high from his first ever freestyle battle. Wow. Wow. Is this what prom is like? <laughs> My God, how about one more time for Douglas over here? Just incredible. Absolutely incredible. How fun. Okay, we're going to keep it moving along. You guys having fun out there yet? You understand the show? All right. The next name that I've pulled is Lee Ebersol. Lee Ebersol, you're next on Kill Tony, live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Lee Ebersol, here he comes. Step back from that ledge, my friend. Step back from that ledge. One more time for Lee Ebersol, everybody. Here he is. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lee Ebersol. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, have nothing bad to say about the city. Uh, pretty much enjoy my time here. Uh, it's a great city to live in. Uh, the weather's decent. It's not too bad. You get all four seasons. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, play a little bit of saxophone. Uh, a lot of saxophone. It's pretty much all I do. Uh, pretty much just spend my time playing saxophone and looking forward uh, to a good time and uh, uh, pretty much all I do is play the saxophone and I'm so good at it it's, it's embarrassing but uh, 
it's not like there's a saxophone near us or anything like that. But um, never seen Kill Tony. I apologize. I enjoy the sh- I enjoy the good time we're having. Uh, I walked here with my roommate and his girlfriend, who should be up here, but uh, um, <laughs> just really playing the saxophone is... Hell yeah. All right. I'm going to save and, you, Lee, uh, before that bear mu- comes in. Pretty much just solidly playing the saxophone, not professionally, <laughs> but really well, and um, a lot of compliments on how all I right, play. All right. All right. Lee, Lee. bear already? I didn't even hear the cat, but... Lee, stick with um, me over just here. Just saying, just curious, as anybody else play the saxophone as good as I do, because I've been there. Oh, is that a bear? Lee, okay. A, Hello, <laughs> Lee. Welcome. Have you ever seen the show before? I haven't, actually. Well, welcome, welcome. I'm glad that guys like you buy random tickets for random shows and then sign up my on your buddy, way in. Uh, my roommate uh, gave me the ticket. His buddy was his birthday, and he was shitting his pants, and he couldn't make it. Wow. So he's like, do you want to go? And I was like, yeah, I'll go. And Heck yeah, beautiful. I haven't are. seen you since season six of Breaking Bad. This is exciting. <laughs> Very fun stuff. So, Lee, welcome. Uh, how long have you played the saxophone for? Pretty much just solidly playing the saxophone my whole life. You said that you live close <laughs> to here? <laughs> I don't play the saxophone. Oh, you don't play the saxophone? No, I'd re- uh, it's just really good at it. Do you or don't you, Lee? I, mean, I do. Okay. You, you sure need- blow pretty hard. 100%. I'll tell you. I'm so good at it. I don't understand why you would say that. You're confusing me, Lee. Why? Because... Either you do or you don't play the play saxophone. It. You do play it. Play it really well. Do you have a sa- do you have a saxophone on you? I don't. No, you don't. I don't. How far away from here do you live? Not far. I could be back. I mean, if you want to take a break. Oh, we're not gonna take a break. But if, if you want to go get a saxophone and I come, actually could. A lot. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. You go okay. home, get your saxophone. No and problem. Come back. No problem. I'll be back. Okay, Lee Ebersole. Security. Let this man back in. Give him an access pass or something so that he can get his saxophone and come back. And maybe, just maybe, we'll end this show with our first ever saxophone battle. That's right. It would be our first ever in the show's history white man man saxophone battle. Wait, what the hell? (laughs) That's karma for you. You know, you're out here slaying people with rap, and then all of a sudden a professional saxophone player comes in. Damn. Welcome to my life. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, Miami isn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope you can backflip. <laughs> yeah, you got any dildos upstairs you can grab? All right. Well, you might have to have something up your sleeve there, uh, <laughs> Douglas. <laughs> Yeah. I am shitting bricks right now. (laughs) Come on. Earlier in the show, you were loving playing extra saxophone. You don't want to have to do it later at the end of the show? Come on. You like playing over us when we're moving the show along and talking about the next segments. You've always wanted to live in Pittsburgh. (laughs) (laughs) You love bridges and rivers and uh, getting hit in the head with Cleveland Browns helmets and whatnot. You know what I mean? You you fucking fucks. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was on the Steelers side. I'm not even a Browns fan. Okay. I'm from Youngstown. Black and yellow is much better than orange and brown. All right. Okay, pull that another name out. Make some noise for your next comedian, Jeff Gurdon. Jeff Gurdon. Here we go. Crowd goes wild. Here comes Jeff. Right from the front. One more time for Jeff, everybody. How are you all doing? Woo! Hey, I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm a garbage man from Buffalo. Well... Everybody from Buffalo is garbage. I mean, I drive a garbage truck, and I live in Buffalo. Uh, Actually, I don't live in the city. I live about an hour south. People like to ask me if the carpet matches the drapes. I don't know, man. My neighbor's got a Confederate flag on the back of his snowmobile, and you think I know what drapes are? What the fuck? Uh, My mom's a woke gym teacher. A real whistleblower. Uh, my mom's boyfriend is a high school wrestling coach. A real dick. He's not an asshole or anything. That's, his name's Dick. 
Gets even better though, his last name is Post. My mom's boyfriend is Dick Post. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Oh uh, yeah, Jeff Gurdon. <laughs> Jeff Gurdon. I remember you from Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, thanks, man. At Hilarities. You're the garbage man from Buffalo. Yeah. Easy to remember. Uh, we made a lot of jokes about you being a garbage man uh, then, and uh, you're the least garbage comedian that's been on this stage tonight, so uh, that's exciting. Yeah. Actually, uh, we found a little buried treasure here uh, in you, the garbage man. So that's true. Your mom has a boyfriend named Dick. Oh, yeah. Dick Post. Yeah, I got it. How about your dad? Your dad's still alive? Uh, yeah, I think so. What do you mean you think so? I haven't seen him since I was about four. Oh, really? What does he do now? you have any idea? As far as I know, the last time I heard, he's a, a horse massage therapist. Whoa, man. From, from dick post to horse cock. Look at this fucking shit. Yeah, That's yeah, incredible. Yeah. <laughs> a, a horse massage therapist. You ever, you ever try to communicate with him or reach out to him? No. Let's check May, in. I think you mean. Let's check in with Douglas. Yes, we are looking for a young wizard for our quest. Would you like to apply? <laughs> Have you ever... What do you like to do for fun? You ever, uh, you ever do any role-playing or anything like that? No, none of that nerdy shit. You no. like whipping feet? Yeah, just basically music and comedy. Other than comedy, what else? Uh, music. Uh, I've been in bands before, but uh, what kind of what kind of bands? Skinner cover. I'm bands? gonna kill myself if you say saxophone right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's basically like uh, blues rock, like Neil Young type shit. Uh huh. Yeah. Hell yeah! What do you do? You sing? You play guitar? What is it? No, I play drums, and thank God that guy played drums because I don't want to get my ass kicked again because that happened last time. Oh, that's right. Oh, you yeah. lost a drum off before. You're one of the many Smart victims. Man. <laughs> oh yeah, mad respect. Fuck yeah. You had a lot better set this time, right, than you did last time? I don't know. Last time was went fucking surprisingly well. Yeah, it went, it went really, way better than I thought it could have. Yeah, it went really, really well. I remember that specifically going extremely well for you. One of the highlights of that show at Hilarities in Cleveland. We're going to be in Cleveland uh, tomorrow night at the House of Blues. Um, so that's exciting ha- have stuff. Have you ever been at work listening to the podcast in your earphones and we say trash can and you go, how do they know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing. I find it really offensive when you guys call Red Band Trash Can. It's very disrespectful to all garbage men everywhere. <laughs> fucking I give see. him a break, y'all. <laughs> I love it. Jesus. Jeff, you have a, uh, you have a girlfriend? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Right. How long have you been with her? Like seven or eight years now. Yeah. Oh, wow. How long is that in garbage time? <laughs> Hell yeah. Do you take her out every Tuesday? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Look at that. What does she do for work? Uh, She has two jobs right now, but she's uh, getting her master's in uh, mental health counseling. Uh Uh-huh. So, yeah, she's a fucking saint. I love her. You ever think of uh, recycling her and getting another girlfriend? (laughs) (laughs) My goodness. Nah, man, I live in such a garbage town. Like, they don't recycle out there. <laughs> they wow. call recyclables like uh, burnables. That's what we do in my town. Wow. You hate wow. recyclables. You hate recycling, huh? No, I just kind of hate all the rednecks that I live around. You know you can move. You know, that's a thing that people do. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does your uh, girlfriend tell, like, her friend's... Like what you do for a living? Like, does she say trash man, or does she make up something? He works in. Uh, he works yeah. in. Uh, he works in. Uh, I hope she's not ashamed of me, but well, she should Tony's be. I guess I don't know. <laughs> she must cheat on you. Oh my God, Red Band! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Red Band reaching for some of those. Uh, you guys can call him trash can all you want. There we go. Oh wow! There you go. You guys want to all do it together one time? One, two, three. Trash, Trash can. Ah, what did you do? There you go. <laughs> Jeff, what's something crazy about you that we haven't found out the other times that you've been on the show? Uh, I don't know. Uh, about a month ago, I found this really weird. Uh, we were at a Halloween party at a bar. 
Uh-huh. And some guy got in my face and threatened to kick my ass because I stopped his friend from touching girls' asses in the bar. Ah. So somebody wanted to kick my ass for stopping sexual assault, and I'm kind of confused by it. Right. Was I doing the wrong thing? Or? Yeah. Why, why are you cock-blocking, dude? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. You're st- I mean, my goodness. Wow, yeah, there's a girl out there that uh, is mad at you for doing that. What yeah, a, what a dirty, needs... dirty girl that is yeah. right there. Huh? She's That's... been drunk since before the show started, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. okay. You should be wow, proud. Wow, very good. <laughs> She's yeah, pregnant, too. Yeah, that's the... There you go. Future mother of Pittsburgh right there. There she is, everybody. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's it. Look at that walking abortion maker right there. That's just... Incredible. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can I ask, uh, what's going on with uh, Big Earl and Jeremy Piven? Are they going to roast battle? Come on, oh, no. God. Come on, Jeff. Yeah. We don't need to talk about that here. That's a whole nother Ooh. show, a whole nother time, a whole nother different issue that we don't have time to cover. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Well, uh, very fun stuff. Both times you've been on this show, you've done well. Uh, ex- very exciting stuff. You are a garbage man, but a great human. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Gurdon, everybody. <laughs> He's on social media, Jeff Gurdon, J-E-F-F-G-R-D-E-N. That's deep. There he goes. He's wearing a Bone Zone shirt. Look at that. One of my favorite characters from Grand Theft Auto right there. <laughs> Ooh, some red Sharpie here. Um, how about uh, Russell? Boy, that's some bad handwriting. Russell, yeah, is that Richards? Rus- Ru- yeah, okay, Russell Richards. Here we go. That is frightful. And the is all delightful. Is no place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Oh, shit. Oh, we, we know, know this, this guy. guy. Make some noise for Russell Richards, everyone. Come on. Okay, okay. I'm really nervous I'm going to pass out or I got a boner. Okay. So I'm a bachelor. I've been a bachelor all my life. And as a bachelor, I date uh, women my own age. I'm 62. Okay. So that should be funny, right? All right. So uh, uh, I was talking to my nephew, and he says, Hey, Uncle, is it true you're actually having sexual activities with a 62-year-old woman? I said, Yes. i got to ask you, what does a 62-year-old woman's JJ taste like? Whoa. Uh, once you get past the smell, you got it licked. <laughs> I, find, I find that older women... Come on, stay with me. I find that older women like to be comfortable, and I respect that. They've been around a long time, right? So that's why I ensure that my automobile is always equipped with tilt steering, because older women like tilt steering for more headroom. So what's the, I found out what the difference is between a grandmother and a granddaughter. The taste. <laughs> oh, my God. Russell Richards. Wow, he's so happy. For those of you just listening, he is celebrating victory up here right now. Oh, I'm so, thank you. I'm so nervous. Thank you. Thank you. What? I'm, I'm just very nervous. I'm very nervous. Hell yeah. There you there are, you Russell. Look at you. you. You look like the guy that answers the door at a haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Hell yeah, Russell. Fuck yeah. So you've been a bachelor all your life. Is that true? Well, I was married once when I was 21 for three years. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Why didn't you like it? What was going on there? Uh, well, the sex was great, but, you know, you got to talk after you're done with that. So. Oh, wow. What I, would you I guys do. talk about? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got you laughing, man. Uh, all right. You don't do that. You're scaring me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Russell, I can't quite figure you out. Uh, what you, you, look, you look like you umpire for like a ghost baseball team. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness gracious, Russell! Wow. So, uh, wh- what do you do for work? I'm retired. You're retired. What did you used to do? I worked for Boeing. I was a field service rep. Oh, you used to work for Boeing. Oh, yeah, I very... worked all around the world. Um, unbelievable job. Uh, about, uh, what, 27 years. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Africa, Middle East, and China. My last assignment was Mongolia. 
Oh, wow. I lived there for four years. You know what it means when you live in Mongolia four years? That means you've been there for three winters. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I got a true. St I got. I was with the I guy. Bet that, I, I bet that joke kills in Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. I was with the guy up on the Siberian border, and I saw 52 below zero. And I actually asked him this: Is that Fahrenheit or Celsius? And he actually told me in English, it doesn't matter. Joe Rogan did a bit about that. Uh huh. And I laughed my ass off when he said it, because that guy actually said that to me. Hell yeah. True story. <laughs> 52 Below Zero is also the name of a Siberian boy band. <laughs> it's because it's so cold. Like 98 degrees? He's All lying right. to you. That's not true. That's not true. I don't know what you just said, Russell. <laughs> um, so you're done with Boeing. You're retired now. So what do you do now? What do you like to do? Doing this. I've been following you. I was in D.C. I'll be in Cleveland tomorrow. Oh, very I cool. can't believe I got called up. Heck yeah. And I've been, to, you know, I did a lot of instruction when I was working in, in, in aviation. You want to throw some comedy in there. So I kind of was talking to people and instructing on the airplane. I would throw comedy in there. Uh -huh. But this is my only second time doing this. Right, right. So now what do you do, like, as hobbies when you're not coming here? I build scale plastic model airplanes. <laughs> oh, look at that. Fuck yeah. So you're a serial killer. <laughs> cool. That's amazing. Never would have guessed. No, I'm not a serial killer, no. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'm a pretty nice guy, really. Yeah, I'm you know, a bachelor. If you're, if you're ever wondering for a way, easier way to get rid of people's bodies, I know a garbage man that I could introduce you to that uh, <laughs> incinerate them for nice you. Nice guy, nice guy. Fuck yeah. <laughs> wow. So when's the last time that you've been with a woman, Russell? When's the last time you had sexual relations with a live body? <laughs> Uh-oh, he's looking at his watch. 3.30. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. You, you hooked up with someone here in Pittsburgh? Or were, were you yeah, there? I have a friend here. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Did you, you whip her feet? <laughs> yeah. The year was 330 A.D. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So 330 here in Pittsburgh, huh? Yeah, yeah. My goodness. And this is someone that you've been with before, or was this a first-time hookup? Before. Uh-huh. Look at you. You have hoes in different area codes, Russell. This is very <laughs> impressive. Well, you know. I, I guess her. it's pretty easy to hook up with chicks when you live under their beds. <laughs> I got you. You're giggling. You're giggling. No, it's not you. It's me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness I love it I love it I can't, be I can't believe they killed you in the last episode of House of Cards it's crazy <laughs> shocking to me that's a real inside I've reference seen, for I've the, seen any no I know most people couldn't make it through that last no, season no I live overseas it's everybody, very unrealistic uh, they, they, made a, uh, they made a female president so but uh, that didn't work because you stepped on my line three times Russell how does that make you feel knowing that you're apologize. taking away from comedy I apologize talk there you go. There you go. That's a different thing altogether. So, what else should we know about you, Russell? Um, uh, well, just any fun facts about you? Okay, I've been told. <laughs> I've been told I have something called the the, the dick root. The dick root. Yeah. Oh. I didn't I, know. I was not aware of that. No. And, and Who did told you, ask, you this? Did you ask them what they meant by that? Yeah, it's the. It's the trunk of the dick. Yeah. I didn't know that. I have a, apparently, I have a very defined dick root. Uh, I wait. don't know. <laughs> Joel, put it away, Joel. You got one, Joel? You got a dick root? Yeah. I bet my dick root is bigger than your dick root. Wow. I think Russell wants to suck your dick root, dude. A root. <laughs> <laughs> You're scary. <laughs> I'm a nice guy, really. <laughs> Is that what you say to the people when you pop open the trunk for a second? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You made me laugh on that one. I got you, Mr. Hinchcliffe. <laughs> oh, I, that's uh, nothing scarier than being called Mr. Hinchcliffe. <laughs> that's another first. You're popping cherries like crazy up here, Russell. So if you were going to murder a young, innocent woman on the streets, uh, how would you do it? Do you think strangulation? Come up or? behind her and take the knife and slice her jugular. Uh, Okie dokie. That was a pretty five. quick answer. Uh, almost seemed like you had that already thought out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> and then you do a little kung fu like she's going to get up from it? <laughs> you know he's done this before because he used the anatomical term jugular. Oh, my God. I was goodness. in the military. We learned about that. Oh, yeah? What, what branch from the uh, military were you in? 82nd Airborne Division. Wow. It's an American hero right here. Heck, yeah. Look at you. My goodness gracious. Well, Long time ago when I was young, slim, and strong. Heck, yeah. You had ever... a bigger dick root then. All right. We don't wrestle. Your dick root is literally the most frightening thing <laughs> I've ever heard of. Uh, it's the scariest thing about you, which says a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. So, wow. Did you ever fight overseas? Uh, no, no. I was in a long time ago. We were in a, I was too young for Vietnam and too old for the deserts. I got right in the seam. Beautiful. No right. combat. I love it. Well, there you go. But well, I would have fought. No, don't worry about that. I would have. Uh, Absolutely. A proud American you are and uh, the type of shape and size of person that we love to have on this show. Uh, how many times have you done stand-up comedy? Second time. First time was in Kazi's Comedy Club, Newport News, Virginia. This is wow. the second time. Very good. Congratulations. Very the second Very time ever on stage, everybody. Make some noise for Russell Richards. <laughs> Fuck yeah, buddy. Absolutely. There he goes. The t- body temperature of a real corpse, everyone. Uh, Russell Richards. <laughs> let it snow, let it snow. Let's keep this fun train moving along. All aboard. Chugga chugga. There goes Russell back to his seat. He's floating back to his seat. Just his feet are not touching the ground. <laughs> Uh, all right, here we go. This name actually looks familiar. Let's see what happens here. Make some noise for Anthony Cantu. Anthony Cantu. Believe I've seen that name before somewhere. Rings a bell. All right, is Anthony coming? I don't see any movement here. Anthony Cantu. I don't see anyone moving. Oh boy, Anthony must be uh, going potty or something, huh? Snapping went off. Anthony Cantu. Blacklisted. All right, sure. Okay, how about Chuck Davidson? Chuck Davidson, huh? Here he comes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Chuck Davidson. What's going on, everybody? My name's Chuck uh, from Pittsburgh, born and raised. I'm 34 and neck deep in a midlife, cri- midlife crisis. 2019 has been a weird year. Uh, I was married for 10 years, and she traded me in a Pittsburgh 6 for a South Carolina 4. But he's got a trailer and a boat. It's pretty sweet. Uh, but being single's kind of been, like, the best thing that's ever happened to me before. I'm doing fun stuff. I'm on all these crazy apps. I see all of the cute girls' fat friends. It's nice. <laughs> um, you also run into some crazy people. I met someone on an app 48 hours ago, and they felt comfortable enough to tell me that their ex-boyfriend almost beat them half to death. And you wonder why you people can't find anyone to stick around with you. (laughs) I've literally known you for less than two days, and you're telling me your deepest, darkest secrets. And I'm just a stranger on the internet. Thanks, guys. That was crazy. Ah, There you go, Chuck Davidson. So she told you that after two days, or...? I matched with her, today's what, Saturday? I matched uh-huh. with her Thursday. Uh-huh. She told me that on Friday. She told you that, so she told you that yesterday, the day after that you matched with her. Correct. So you guys never met in person. No. She told you via message that her ex-boyfriend beat her half to death. Correct. Uh-huh. Did she say why? What she did wrong? Was it the... <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on, Pittsburgh, you, you know what the fuck's up with beating women. Come on, make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ben Roethlisberger style, dude. Fuck yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, so that's interesting stuff. This woman that left you, how long were you with her for? 12 years. 12 years. And when did this happen? When did she leave you high and dry? May. May of this year. Correct. My goodness. And it came out of nowhere? Uh, she- I mean, I'm... To be honest, the relationship kind of degraded the last couple of years, but uh-huh. and she, but 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 was she seeing somebody else? Yeah. Yeah. And who uh, who was this guy? Do you know him? Some random guy that she used to be with when she lived in South Carolina, like over a decade ago. Right. And now he lives up here. No. 
they just started communicating online or something like I'm that? I'm sure. Right. So, wow. Look at that. Incredible. What was your first rebound? What was that like? First rebound. Um, yeah. It was just awkward. When The last time I dated was 2007, and I had gotten my first smartphone after I met this woman. So the Got your first what? My sm- first smartphone, like the dating. Smart. Smartphone. Yeah. Sorry. Smartphone. I'm super nervous. Uh, like the dating platform has changed completely in that time. And it's of course. Yeah. It's a whole new world out there. So your first hookup, how'd, how'd that happen? What, were you, what app were you on or how did that go down? It was Bumble. Uh-huh. Uh, it was just some chick that just said, hey, here's my number. Come over to my house tonight. And, and did then, you whip her feet? All right. There you no. go. So then you hit her up and you went to her place? Yes. And then what happened? You just jumped right on top of her? Basically, you sit there and you fake conversation for like a half hour. Half hour, right. That's and then it's just straight to business. Right. And then, and then so then what, uh, you, take your, you take your clothes off and uh, you just shoved it in? Condom? No condom? Condom for sure. Right. Condom for, for sure. sure. Have you ever had, uh, have you had non-condom sex yet with, uh, with one of these women that you've met online? Absolutely. <laughs> what was that, Douglas? We'll check in with both of you. What'd you say? I, I said what? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and you said absolutely, correct, Chuck? Yes. Right. And which one was that? This was a chick that you hooked up with a couple times, or was yeah, it just... Yeah, I saw her for about a month. Oh, wow. Oh, I courted a girl for nine years, and nothing came of it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So uh, you hung out with her for a while. She, this was here in Pittsburgh? Correct. What does she do? Uh, she worked at a gemstone place. Ooh. Oh. Lucky. Hey, look at that. Yeah. So she believed in crystals and shit? Is that what you're oh, saying? Jesus. She didn't make me crystals, but that's basically what she did was like deal with that shit. Are you still with this woman? No. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> wow. So you went raw dog with her, huh? Yeah. A few times? Yeah. Where would you shoot your load when you would pull out, if you pulled out? <laughs> Where, what would you do there? Because you seem like the kind of guy that would like, uh, bring your own like, wet nap and like, fire it off into no. there or something like it that. It was just no? straight inside. Whoa, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. Critical hit. Look at that. <laughs> My God. Jesus Christ, just squirting away like a fucking Heinz ketchup it was bottle her over request, here. So. H- what? Him. She requested it. So. Oh, wow. She told you to come inside of her? Yeah. Oh, my God. I feel like if you made a baby, it would come out with glasses already on. <laughs> Good Lord, Douglas. Is she on birth control or are you just saying prayers? She said she was. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, checks uh, out. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can only take a person on their word. Absolutely. I mean, Dude. you could be a father, you know, like it could ruin your whole entire life just by trusting her. Yeah, okay. It would just add to the year. It would be perfect. What do you do for work? I manage a Kinko's. Whoa, Uh, look at that. One in the Kinko, two in the Stinko. Look at you, you (laughs) goddamn animal. Someone knows how to fucking party, right? Have you ever had uh, dragon-style sex before? Oh, dragon-style. Can you explain to us what that is, Douglas? Sure. It's very similar to doggy-style, but you get a mouthful of banaca, and you grab a lighter, and then you (laughs) spit the banaca... (laughs) At the lighter, <laughs> and you go, "Who's the dragon now?" <laughs> <laughs> you are on fire tonight, uh, <laughs> Douglas. Wow, what's the craziest thing you've ever done sexually, Chuck? Sexually, uh, I don't. Girls are really into like choking nowadays. Uh huh. So oh. like. She has to be lightly choked, so I, like, started to do it, and then she grabbed her hand and just put, like, a death grip. And that's why you're having sex with her? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the last comedian, Russell Richards, does that to women without even putting his dick inside of them. Uh, it's very exciting. Does that to women that he sees on the sidewalk. Uh, so he didn't like that one, Russell? No, you don't like that? <laughs> it's weird what you like and what you don't like. I figured you would like that callback to you being a serial killer. Wow. Wow. So, Chuck, what else should we find out about you before we let you go? Mm. All I've been doing is just trying to rebuild my life. I started a podcast, launched it this week. It's all about how crazy it is to date this 
you know, after such a long time. Right. Heck yeah. I mean, you're an old school dude. You're working at a fucking Kinko's. Yeah. Making copies, faxing making people, copies. right? <laughs> doing that. How long you work at a Kinko's now? I've been there five years. Oh my goodness. That is exciting. I'm surprised you just you even have to be on these apps. Normally guys that work at Kinko's just rake in all the pussy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that'll be five cents a copy, but for you, babe, fuck, I nothing. <laughs> Shit grows on trees. All right, Chuck. Well, I mean, fun stuff, dude. You're talking about your real life. You're getting it out there. You're talking about uh, stuff that you actually can relate to, that you can connect with, and that's interesting and compelling. So uh, congratulations. This is a great start. First time on stage? Yeah. First time ever doing stand-up. Chuck Davidson. There he goes, everybody. Make some noise for him. He's doing it. Come on. That dude will come inside of you if you ask him to. What a, what a world we live in. What a world we live in. All you have to do is tell him. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, this is a one-word name. Let's see what happens here. Make some noise for Kuba. K-U-B-A. Whoa, there's a pop from oh. the crowd. There seems to be a controversial figure. Here he comes. One more time for Cuba, everybody. Since the July, I was in a relationship with a blind girl until she started seeing other people. You didn't see this one coming. <laughs> Neither did she. But dating in America is way different than dating in Poland. Back in Poland, when I went on a date, I used to hope to have sex. Here, I hope she's the right sex. <laughs> no one here had sex with a tranny? I thought America was the home of the brave. I couldn't believe the balls on some of you. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. My name is Kuba. Kuba! In and out, 50 seconds. Kuba. Fuck yeah, you've been on the show before, right? Yes, sir, last time in Pittsburgh. Last time you were here in Pittsburgh, absolutely. And look at you, you're back, you little Polish sensation, you. So happy. Hell yeah, so happy, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. So normally, you would be the most serial killer type of character that's been on this show so far, but Russell Richards has a championship belt at this point strapped around him, the old double champ over here. I love it. So welcome back uh, to the show. You live here in Pittsburgh. Yep. Originally from Poland. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. The home of the great Joanna Janjacek. Yep. yep. MMA fighter. MMA fighter, indeed. Um. So uh, she, we just found out that she is, has a chance to win the strawweight championship again. Did you know this? April 18th, she has a re, uh, match for the championship that she lost previously. I did not know that, but I'm it's excited. It's the only thing Polish that's happening with any Polish athletes. You guys aren't very good at sports. She's the only one. No. You play any sports? I used to swim. You used to swim? 16 years. Six years? 16. 16 years. <laughs> How long? How long did you do it? 16. <laughs> wow. You swam for 16 years. So that's how you got here from Poland, huh? All right. That's a little cutie pie joke. That's a cutie pie joke for my family members that aren't used to hard-hitting comedy. Just a little something. Just to show you I can still be a good little boy. <laughs> what do you do? Swim here? All right. I love it. So, uh, Poland, you ever communicate with your Polish parents? All the time, on Sundays. What? He said, all the time, on Sundays. On Sundays. Is that what you said? Yes. What's wrong? You getting shy over here? Yeah, it's my accent. Oh, it's okay. Come on. Jeez. I haven't, seen you, I haven't seen you this sad since the Chernobyl incident. <laughs> My goodness gracious. Does your accent ever uh, help you, like, uh, in life? You, you have a girlfriend? No, I thought it would help with ladies, but it doesn't. <laughs> I thought it would help me with the ladies, but it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. how, about, how about you? When's the last time you went on a date with a girl? Uh, back in Poland. Back in Poland? Aw. Yeah. 
<laughs> How long have you been here in America? Eight years. Eight years? Have you, have you kissed a girl since being in America? No, I told you it's confusing in here. So, no? No? Uh, no. Wow. Um, I've seen you set up a lot of people on this show with other people. Yeah. <laughs> what? Douglas. Douglas. What, what, Douglas? You tell me. I, I would like for you to join my campaign. I think together we can defeat the evil spirit called celibacy. <laughs> so you haven't kissed an American girl before? No. What do you guys, you guys, is there a girl out there that would be willing to give this guy his first ever American kiss? Is there a girl, is this one right here? Come on up here, sweetheart. Here she comes. This is a real American girl. Cuba, put this mic in the mic stand here. Pittsburgh, I don't know. This guy's been here eight years. You want to see him kiss an American girl for the first time ever? Come here. What's, what's your name? Katerina. Katerina. Wow, you have a little Polish name. Look at these two Europeans. Look at this. A Russian and a Polak walk into a bar. Here we go. You ready for this? Only in Kill Tony Pittsburgh tw 2019, this is his first American kiss. Whoa! Wow, Katerina, you're a legend. Holy shit. Oh my God, Cuba's bending at the knee right now. Oh my goodness. Wow, look at that. He's got a little Polish sausage in his pants right now. Oh my goodness. Celibacy, go back to the cave whence you came. <laughs> this is the birth, best $36 I ever spent. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Can I, can I just say I had an angle on that kiss that the audience didn't, and he was definitely trying to shove way more tongue down her <laughs> throat. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. I've heard of a French kiss, but that was a Polish kiss, yeah. dude. That was the fucking... There was some uh, election meddling going on in that fucking thing there. <laughs> My goodness gracious, Cuba. Wow. Did you almost come in your pants? Like, I mean, it's been a while. There you go. It's pretty dry. It's pretty dry. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. My goodness. Wow, Cuba. So what's the, what's the plan now? I mean, like, you just had your first American kiss. Do you think this is going to help you with your confidence with the American girls? I think so. The, pl the plan now is to go home and aggressively masturbate. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think you're going to have to fucking, uh, yeah, I think you're going to have to do that. So, Cuba, I mean, probably the set of the night so far, you had your first American kiss. You're, we understand you clearly. Your accent isn't that thick at all. Uh, what if his accent went away entirely after he kissed <laughs> the girl? <laughs> I'm having the time of my life, Tony. <laughs> it was all fake. All right, Cuba. This was a massive accomplishment. You feel good? I feel great. There you go. Cuba, everybody. We're going to keep it moving. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. There you go. Fuck what yeah. What a nice guy. He's a wild and crazy guy. <laughs> there he is. Wow. Looks like Cuba's having a little missile crisis in his pants right now. <laughs> My goodness gracious. How about one more time for Katarina? I love it when uh, on Kill Tony we have the most amazing fan base. These women that are fans of this show are literally willing to do anything to help the show. So thank you, Katarina. You're a boss indeed. How about uh, we keep it moving along? Your next comedian goes by the name of Connor Swiggler, everyone. What can happen next? Anything on Kill Tony live in Pittsburgh. So it's the Game of Thrones song again. One more time for Connor, everybody. Uh, I've got big feet, so you know what that means, right? I look like an asshole trying to put on skinny jeans. 
Yeah. I, uh, any parents in the audience? Yeah. Well, I got a little tip for you. If your family goes through more than two boxes of sandwich bags a month, someone in your house is selling drugs. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not the sharpest knife in the sandbox. I, uh, I only learned how to spell the song, I only learned how to spell apparently because of the song, I mean, motherfucker. I, I only learned how to spell respect because of the Aretha Franklin song. So now I'm just waiting for the next uh, positive song to come along to teach me how to spell apparently. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm a dum-dum, I'll admit it. Thank you, that's been my time. Connor Swiggler, fuck yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Which one of the many Pittsburgh bridges do you live under? <laughs> My goodness. You look like you're uh, fresh off a barrel fire. He, lo- he looks like nobody ever found Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, I actually came from one of your least favorite places in the world, upstate uh, New upstate York. Upstate New York. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Did you come in the back of his garbage truck? <laughs> no, no, no. What no, part? Uh, Albany? Uh, well, I'm originally from near Binghamton, but I came from Rochester. Oh, Rochester, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, Buffalo is like an island that I can sort of withstand, but everywhere else, just unacceptable. I'll never be there again. I'll never be where you live. Think about that. Really soak that in for a second. I'm not mad at you, Tony. I'm not no, mad at I you. No, I know. I've never seen anyone look like both Jay and Silent Bob at the same yeah, time before. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> Yo! Uh, if you want to see, I actually have a picture of a comedian from Rochester who looks like Louis J. Gomez and Big J. Okerson. Oh, okay. Well, you're going to have to show that to me sometime uh, via uh, online ordered. messaging or something like that. So, even if it says it's unread, I read it. Don't worry about it. Um, wow. So, Connor, let's talk about it. How old are you? I'm, I'm 25. 25. First time doing stand-up? No, I've been doing it for uh, two years in June. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Was this after Snow White fired you? <laughs> <laughs> who, who do, why would Snow White fire? He looks yeah. like one of the seven dwarves grown up. Oh, wow, well, that is... Fuck! Play the drums, bitch! That's... <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is a, that, that, if you're wondering what that sound effect is, that is my mother. This was recorded this morning uh, because uh, she said that... It, what, what was the context of this? She said that every once in a while you're just completely off with your jokes and uh, she said stick with the drums, bitch. So this is my mother. Just play the drums, bitch! Wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's, that's my mom. And then she made me breakfast. It was beautiful. And then uh, her, uh, her uh, boyfriend slash husband, whatever the fuck they are, he has another one here. What's that one again? Well, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pat. Good old Pat. You really, if, the, if, you, if you could see him, it's even 30 times funnier because he's just a really <laughs> mellow, like, good guy, but uh, he doesn't know a goddamn thing about comedy. He doesn't know what a good one or a bad one is anyway, but... Uh, <laughs> but he still will criticize you once in a while. Well, that was a good one. <laughs> this is, these were both recorded today, added to the soundboard today. You're the first uh, live shows to ever hear them. My mother, and, my mother and what many people would call my stepfather. We are coming fresh off of a night in Youngstown. These guys ate at my dad's Italian restaurant last night. Any, uh, anything you'd like to say about that, guys? Any input for these uh, Pittsburghians? <laughs> Uh, anything that Tony has mentioned about his dad being uh, a badass gangster is more than true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was shocked. My mouth was agape at certain moments where Tony had to tell me to close it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah, be cool. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Tony. You've already said too much. Stop. Yeah, yeah. We're going to keep it moving along. There's a here. red dot on your forehead. Connor, uh, did I ask you what you do for a living? Uh, I work at a distillery. You work in a distillery? Yeah. Heck yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, what do you do for fun? Any hobbies or special skills or talents or anything like that? Uh, not particularly. I mean, I draw a little bit, but yeah. not very well. Potion making, bit. sword whittling. <laughs> oh, those are some of your hobbies? Yeah, you know. Oh. <laughs> What kind of whittling do you do? Sword whittling. Sword whittling? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Like, how many swords have you whittled? Oh, 17. 17. <laughs> Man. Balsa wood is the most compliant. Wow. That is some big time whittling. 
All right, Connor. Well, we're going to keep this fun train moving along. You are a good spirit, a good soul. And at 25, two years in, I say, you know, keep hustling, man. Keep writing and working. You're there in Rochester. Do the Rochester Club. Do Albany. Make the drive all the way around upstate New York through all that dog shit. Unacceptable. Move uh, the fuck out of that place. <laughs> yeah. That's the plan, homie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sorry I wrote my name so shitty. My last name is Swaggler. <laughs> Swaggler. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Yep, you have really bad handwriting. I'm terrible. Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. imagine how bad your drawings must be if you can't <laughs> yeah. even. I told you cartoons. Can't, That's can't it. even I write told, your yeah, own yeah. name. Yeah. All right, there he goes, Connor Swaggler, Thank everyone. Thank you, Tony. You got it. Okay, Jared Trinkler, you're next. Jared Trinkler. Oh, Jesus. Oh. He's coming from this crew of Miami Floridians here. They can't believe it. They're hugging right now. The two guys that have gotten up from Miami just hugged when Jared got pulled. Here he is, Jared Trinkler. Thank you, thank you. So a little bit of context. I had no idea what, what this show was or what this was about. These two guys dragged me here. Uh, I know you're Tony. You fuck. You don't. And uh, you play the sound. So that's, that's, that's the gist of this show from what I understand. Uh, I came with these two guys here. Uh, Foot whipping Levi and uh, uh, Steeler slandering Sean down here, and uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, just uh, continuing on the uh, um, the train of bad performances. So I didn't really come with come up with any uh, uh, stand up material. So I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna do I, I'm just gonna for the next 20 seconds. <laughs> For the next 20... So, so, so how about the Steelers? How about the Pittsburgh Steelers? Can you, can you play the, the meow sound? You play the meow All right, sound. there you go. That's your time, Jared. Uh, Thank you. Uh, this is, uh, it's all been wonderful. This is dog shit as it gets. It's just a clump of dog shit humans here. There he goes, Jared Trinkler. You can put the mic back in the mic stand. There you go. You're done, Jared. Thank you. Thank you. Jared, you're all done. No one wants to talk with you. All Put right. the mic in the mic. No, it's so okay. Much. Go ahead. Jared Trinkler, everybody. There he goes. Jared Trinkler. Back to obscurity you go. It's that way, buddy. There you go. It's a long walk to back to the front. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Hey, uh, can the guy from Boeing make sure a flight leaving from Pittsburgh to Miami blows the fuck up on its way uh, in the next couple days? I got to salute my man Russell. I know people at Boeing that are, that are not afraid to kill other humans. So, Okay, we're keeping it moving. Make some noise for Tony Source. Tony Source. Perhaps it's Tony Jorce. Tony... Jay Ors, here he comes. He's got the Skankfest shirt representing. A lot of fun history we have with Skankfest. Come on, everybody, one more time for Tony. So I, so I just bought a house a few months ago, and my Uncle Rob got me a punch bowl as a housewarming present. And uh, <laughs> you could tell it was just something he got in his garage and just pawned off on me. Either that, or he thinks I'm like a cult leader or something. And then my Uncle John, he got me a, a $50 Home Depot gift card with $37 on it. <laughs> and it said, to John from mom. So I made sure to thank my grandma. And then my Uncle Wes, he got me a two-week free trial to Hulu. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how he got my credit card numbers. And then my Aunt Mare, she, get me, she got me the same thing that she always does for Christmas and my birthday. She just kicked me in the nuts. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys want to come over to my place, I got all the punch you can drink. I got a $37 lamp. And my Hulu's out, but I'm thinking about getting Meow. Disney+. Plus. There you go. Exactly a minute. Tony Source coming in strong. Punchlines throughout. Jokes. Timing. Execution. How long have you been doing stand-up? I this is my first time. What? Wow. <laughs> Incredible first time uh, position by Tony Source. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah, dude. Where'd you come from today? Well, uh, 
I live in Elwood City now, but I grew up like closer to Pittsburgh, a place called Cranberry. Mm. Heck yeah. Do you have to let it linger? <laughs> All right. Cranberry jokes. People, come on now. <laughs> you, I thought you were funny. Has anyone ever told you you look like the puppet from the Saw movies? <laughs> I got wow, good. you do look like the puppet from the Saw movies. Because if so, I'd like to play a game with you. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I got high cheekbones, man. Oh. Yeah, yeah you do. Fuck yeah. You also sort of look like Stewie from the Family Guy. <laughs> Has anyone told you that before? Nope. No? Has anyone ever told you that you look like uh, the kid that wanted to be a dentist and root off the red-nosed reindeer? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nothing. Has anyone ever told you you look like my future friend? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for friends, buddy, so let's wow. do this. <laughs> Tony, congrats on your first ever... Oh, what happened there? I missed it. Welcome, welcome. So what do you do for work? I'm a CNC machinist. I, make, I run lathes and mills. I make parts for electron microscopes. Wow, look at you. You're a grown-ass man. How old are you? I'm 24. 24 years old, working in the mill here in Pittsburgh. It's My goodness, n- It's great. pretty nice, though. It's air-conditioned. Yeah, yeah air-conditioning. Yeah. That's all it takes. Wow. Fancy. Yeah, Fuck man. Yeah. My goodness. So was Auschwitz, but uh, <laughs> I mean, it, no, it was. doesn't mean it's a great gig. They had what? heat. Okay, there you Auschwitz go. Auschwitz had air conditioning? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what version of the story did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'll just go back to playing my saxophone. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I love it. So, Tony, you're 24. This is your first time doing stand-up. You work in a mill. What do you do when you're not working? Well, what do you do um, for fun? I've been doing jujitsu for three years. What? Yeah. Wow. And uh, I will also play guitar. I do open mic nights and stuff. And I've been trying to... I've been telling myself I'm going to start stand-up for, like, over a year now, uh-huh. and uh, I plan on continuing doing this. This is going to be my main focus. I Heck think. yeah, this is the start of something special in your life. That's fun. That is awesome. What's your love life like? You have a girlfriend? Um, it's been a bit of a dry spell recently, but uh-huh. uh, I broke up with uh, an alcoholic crazy person in June. So. Oh, wow. Why'd you break up with her? <laughs> Because she was an alcoholic? She kept getting drunk and crying after sex, and it was freaking me out. What, what, like, when that she would cry hot. after sex, what would she cry about? Um, she, I just, I don't know. She would just get really emotional. And Look at you. Crying. I like a guy that doesn't even ask his girl what she's crying about. <laughs> no idea. Who gives a fuck, bro? I already busted my nut. It's like, you want to use this cum towel for your tears, dummy? <laughs> <laughs> well, she would just be like, uh, I don't know. It, it happened a couple times, and I was like, what's wrong? She would say nothing. Uh-huh. And I was like, it doesn't look like anything's wrong. I mean, it looks like something's wrong. I, uh-huh. don't, I didn't want to, like, I don't know. Right. It was pretty weird. Maybe, maybe she wanted you to whip her feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The old quintuple callback by <laughs> Joel Berg, Joel. And Hernandez. I'll do it again, Tony. It's worked two out of five times, but... Uh, <laughs> He's trying to roll a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness gracious. So have you, uh, have you hooked up with any chicks since you broke up with this uh, alcoholic crazy girl? Um, I got my dick sucked in the Harmony Inn parking lot. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Russell's very excited about that. Was he the one that sucked your dick? <laughs> Wait, what parking lot did you get it sucked in? Harmony Inn. It's, Harmony Inn? It's a haunted inn hotel slash bar that's near my house. Wow. So maybe it was Russell that sucked your dick. <laughs> was that a haunted house parking lot? <laughs> Did they try to slit your throat before doing it? Wow. No, but I, when I tapped on her head, I'm like... Wait, what do you mean you tapped on her head? I was like... <laughs> you really do do jujitsu. You tap out when you come? That's incredible. It's fucking, oh, I can't take it. Ah, uh, ah, uh. <laughs> Well, I thought, you know, I'd tap on her head courtesy... And, uh, I'll to let her know that you, what does that mean that you're about to come? Yeah. So like, how, show us how many times. Like, what would the, what would that look like? Like, let's say that the bucket is. <laughs> let's say that the bucket. I'm gonna put the mic next to the bucket. So wait, and, come here. Take a step this way. I have a short cord over here. So let's say that's the girl sucking your dick. So how would you tap it? Show us. Just a little. <laughs> three taps. Wow. Tap three times. 
on my head if you're coming. <laughs> Twice <Right>. on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> okay, so you tapped on her head three times. Then what happened? She jerked her head up, and I came all in her car vents. You came in her car vents? Wow. That, that reminds me of the air conditioning in Auschwitz. Uh, <laughs> God, you came in her car vents. Like the air conditioner thing? My God, you blow a load like a fire extinguisher, huh? Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I got some distance, I guess. I don't know. Wow, <laughs> that is frightening, dude. Fuck. Now I think I know why your ex-girlfriend used to cry after you would come. <laughs> My God. <laughs> My fucking ceiling's all sticky. <laughs> so every time she gets in her car, you're like, man, I love the smell of chlorine. <laughs> <laughs> her buttons stick, too. Now I bet. No. I ah. bet they do. <laughs> What'd you say? I said her, her buttons probably stick, too. Oh, wow. Look attempt. at you. You're a goddamn disgusting animal. Wow, what's, uh, what's the farthest you think you could shoot your load? How many of you want to see him shoot his load up here tonight, huh? <laughs> it was all dudes. Yeah, like, yeah I do, bro. Fuck yeah. yeah. You, think you, you think you could hit these three guys from Miami from where you're standing? Yeah, I could probably do that. <laughs> Fucking awesome, man. Absolutely awesome stuff. Wow, anything else we should know about you, Tony? Um, nope, that's it. All right, well, this was an amazing set for a first time, one of the better sets I think we've ever seen. Uh, you were getting laughs throughout your whole set, and uh, you had a great interview. You did absolutely everything right. You remind me of another guy named Tony that, uh, <laughs> that I know. Incredible performance. One more time Thank for you. Tony Source, everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. One more time for Tony, everyone. Tony killed Tony. You know what? We haven't had a lady up here uh, tonight. What do you say I go through this bucket until we get a lady up here? And, uh... You know what, before we do that, we'll do a lady after this. But first, uh, there is a young man that is here tonight uh, that we met in Washington, D.C. He was on that show. He has muscular dystrophy. He absolutely destroyed on that show in Washington, D.C. So much so that we invited him back to the second show in Washington, D.C. He destroyed yet again. He made the trip all the way here today to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania from Washington, D.C. or wherever he's from. He's here live. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you for the third time ever in Kill Tony history, the one and the only Martin Phillips, everyone. Here we go. Here he comes. It's about to go down. He's ready to fucking rock. I told him, next time he's around to kill Tony, let me know. He let me know. And now dreams come true. Martin Phillips, everybody, come on! Thank you so much. My name is Martin. Uh, I, uh, I pee sitting down, but, but I poop standing up. So, so I make up for it. Uh, uh, I, uh, I really like uh, these Disney live action remakes. Uh, the best part is, it's no longer weird to masturbate to Disney princesses. <laughs> and I, uh, it, it, used, it used to be like, isn't that a cartoon? And it'd be like, uh, uh, it's drawn really well. <laughs> that's, that's art, you know? And now it's like, isn't that a kid's movie? And you're like, we're all kids at heart. Uh, uh, I, uh, I found this book the other day. It was called A Hundred Places to Bike Before You Die. Uh, the Last Place Off the Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> you did everything. Absolutely. A verified killer. Martin Phillips. 
Back at it again. Three for three all time in Kill Tony history. Another incredible performance here tonight. Welcome back to the show, Martin. Hey, hey what's up? How's life, uh, how's life been going for you? It's all right. You know, yeah. It's all right. It's Remind cool. us where you're from. Where'd you come from me today? Uh, I do live in D.C., like right outside D.C. Heck yeah. So, wh- what and I, I like Pittsburgh, but the drive fucking sucks. The, yeah. The drive sucks. Pittsburgh, cool. Hell yeah. I'd imagine especially if you're the one driving, huh? Yeah, I do. I do drive a car, yes. That's you do drive? Yeah, I do drive, yeah. Really? Yes. Oh, Surprising Jesus. to almost everyone. <laughs> All right, there you go. But yeah, I drive. I've never been in a car accident. Oh. I have scraped a number of cars, but never been in an accident. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's good. I'm good. Fuck yeah. How many times have you been checked for a DUI? Uh, uh, uh. So you, you take it out the place. It's usually people outside seeing me walk into the car right. who are very concerned. So, <laughs> are you okay to drive? And then I get in my car and I run them over. So <laughs> it's, it's, I take care of it. So. Absolutely, yeah. man. Goddamn assassin you are. I love it. Uh, wow. Um, so, uh, since the last time we saw you, what else has been going on? Anything change? Anything in your life, uh, happen or anything like that? Uh, uh, uh nothing too major. Mm-hmm. I guess, uh, I've just been hanging around. I joined a book club. You joined a book club? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, see, there, there was, like, this girl I liked who was in the book club, but she doesn't like me that way. So now I'm just in this stupid fucking book club. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, classic boy meets girl story. <laughs> wow! You ever do any? Uh, you ever do any role playing like our friends Douglas and Kevin here? Uh, well, uh, right now, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Right there. Uh, <laughs> what do you like to do? You have hobbies? We, I'm sure we've asked you this before. I can't uh, quite remember. I, I, I had that at parody album. I mean, that for my. Ariana Grande, Barry Allen. Oh, that's right. You have. I got. I got. After it, it, we mentioned it on the show, it has like over 800 listens wow. on, Sound, on SoundCloud. So right, and that's not even so. easy to find. We had a lot of. It's hard to find an Ariana Grande parody album because if you enter an Ariana Grande, a bunch of Ariana Grande yeah. songs come up. I don't know. People online said it wasn't that hard, but oh wow! Well. I, 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 that's what they said. Okay, All so. Right. Well, I mean, oh, shots fired! <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. So, you, are you staying the night here in Pittsburgh tonight? Yeah, I, I have a buddy who lives here. Yeah, oh, yeah. very. I thought about driving back, but that sounds dangerous. So, yeah. <laughs> I got an honest question. Yeah. When you sleep, do you sleep still, or uh, I, I'm asleep? I wouldn't know, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, hey, hey! hey you know what? No. <laughs> But, I but, will punch a man in glasses. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, actually, uh, uh, according to your mother, it's not that bad. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, shit, no. Don't do it, Joel. Come on. He, he has muscular dystrophy. Get back there. Yeah, okay. Oh, my God. I hope this guy doesn't play drums. <laughs> I hope he does. Uh. <laughs> Man, can you imagine that if he be drunk? In middle school, oh. bad, and I was the bass drum. So. Wow, hell so. yeah! You know how to shake, rattle, and yeah, roll, it huh? Is, yeah, it was very. <laughs> I love it. Wow. You're getting getting, down with the sickness. It's getting hot up here. I could use some good old AC from Auschwitz right now. (laughs) (laughs) It's a you realize the joke? It's not really that they had AC in Auschwitz. It's that they would dump poison in the vents. You do understand this, right? I'm not actually saying that there's functional That's AC. not what you meant, Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> they Don't would you dump, dare. Don't they you put dare. The, we they all put, heard it like that. They put Zyklon through the roof in the openings. Squid saying the alien right. terms like Zyklon. Okay. All right. 
All right. I mean, what can I say, dude? Martin Phillips, you are three for three all time on Kill Tony. You, the show is built for people like you. We love you. Martin Phillips, everybody. Be careful, dude, for the love of oh, God. God. Oh, my God. Step by step, day by day. Let's get a girl up here. Oh, my God. All right. We're going to dig through the bucket till we find a girl. Is that okay with you guys? <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. Sorry to Jonas. Sorry to Ben. Sorry to Dylan. Uh, sorry to McNasty. Uh, so close. So close. Tomcat's a guy, right? <laughs> Ooh, another Tony. We got a lot of Tonys here. Sorry to Dylan. We're going to keep going here. We're going to see what happens here. Andy, we apologize. Ian, so close. What was that one? Walt W. Huh. Oh. oh, look at that. Oh, sausage fest. Hopefully Will, there is a female. Will, Fred. Oh, my goodness. We're so close here. How about Taylor? Is Taylor a boy or a girl? Taylor Lanier. I'm a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a boy. You sound like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to Phil. Sorry to Blake. Sorry to Dan. Ooh, we're getting down to it. Sterling's a boy name. Oh, my goodness. There's only... There's only Robert and wow, Seth. Oh no my goodness, Sims? no no woman signed up tonight. Is this true? Is there is there a woman that actually signed up for the show? You had to have already have signed up, is what I'm asking. Not some chick that has one one liner that's gonna bomb. That's throwing it together right now. Uh, uh, Did any woman sign up for the show that somehow didn't get not. in the bucket? <laughs> Somebody just wow. said they have tits. My goodness gracious. Let's throw this back in and pick one. I, I mean, that's the only option. Oh, is this guy here? Yeah, we're going to get to that. We're, yeah, I know about saxophone guy. I didn't forget about what I said was going to be the ending of the show. But if you guys want to rush to the end, we can. You guys want to do that? No, it's okay. That lady said saxophone guy. You fucking idiots. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look at this. There are many serial killers here in Pittsburgh. Just a bunch of... Didn't realize Frankenstein bought a ticket for tonight's Ooh. show. There he goes. Okay, well, this is destiny for you, isn't it? The one person with a women's name. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your final comedian of the night, Taylor Lanier. Here we go. The bucket of destiny has spoken. Taylor Lanier is walking to the stage. Royals, it's the one and I love. Come on, one more time for Taylor Lanier, ladies and gentlemen. All right, well, um, I've never done this before, but uh, I hate going to like shopping malls and shit like that because, like, anytime there's like a code out at them, whether there's like a missing child, it's like there's a young girl, age 10 to 12, you can't locate her. There's always like some guy, like, I found her. And pointing to me, which is <laughs> kind of awkward. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I sound like a bitch, but um, <clears throat> trying to think of what else I can say. Um, I have a friend, she um, downloaded something on her phone. She's looking at it really intently. I was like, what are you looking at? She's like, it's a shark tracker. Let you know where sharks are in the area. I was like, are you doing research on that or what? She's like, no, I'm just, uh, I like to know where those fuckers are at all times, just in case. Um, sorry, really nervous. I, I can't think of anything else. Just. <laughs> there you go, 52 seconds from Taylor Lanier, everybody. All right, it's all good, Taylor. Look at you. We tried to find a woman in the audience, but instead we clearly could only get a lesbian up here. Um, <laughs> As soon as you said you're going to pull out a woman's name, I was like, it's fucking me. It's yeah, me. it is. It's you. And then we even put the names in, mixed them up, and you came out again. <laughs> there you go. It's a shame you can't come out in real life like uh, we all are waiting for you to do now. Surprisingly straight. No, no. I, I know what that's like for everyone to think you're gay. but Brothers. Uh, but be straight. Yeah. We're, uh, no, I'm, uh, you're brothers with Macaulay Culkin, not me. <laughs> Not me, my little friend. So uh, welcome, welcome to the show. How old are you, Taylor? I'm 27. 27 years old. You're from here in Pittsburgh? Yes. Absolutely. And uh, you live in the cultural district? Um, only on the weekends. No. Whenever right. they let me stay the night. 
Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, what do you do for work? Uh, I work at a bakery. Yeah? What do you do at the bakery? What do you specialize in there? Um, I used to manage it, and now I just... Grabbing buns? Bake shit, yeah. <laughs> Sticky buns? Yeah, I put, I put the buns in the oven. Cream pies? All right. Cream pies. Um, <laughs> uh, used to manage the bakery, now what? And now I just do whatever shit they need me to. What happened? You lost your manager job? No, I quit because our boss was a dick. So I quit. Like Quit managing. You're like, fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to yeah. fucking sweep powdered sugar off the floor. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. All right. And how long have you worked at that bakery? Um, collectively, like two or three years. Cool. What do you do for fun? Um... You seem like the kind of guy that has some hobbies. You ever rollerblade on a skateboard? <laughs> no, um, I just like to go out to shows, concerts. I like to go out and do things. Yeah. Nature shit. Yeah, like nature shit? Yeah. Like what? what? Um, hiking, swimming. I go to like all... This area has like... The East Coast has a bunch of like national parks and shit. Uh-huh. Yeah. What kind of uh, bands, concerts do you go to? Um, I just went to Amarosa last weekend in Cleveland. Amarosa? Wow, I love her on The Apprentice. Yeah, yeah. There's a great lute player that's playing in Pittsburgh Park later uh, this weekend if you want to join me. So. There's a, a what? A lute player. A l- wow. Heck yeah. These guys are big fans of Imagine Dragons. We are. <laughs> wow. So Taylor, what else would we be surprised to find out about you? Uh, I'm a father. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's upsetting because he's like this tall and he's eight. So. Wow. Are you sure you're the father? 100%. My God. How did this happen? Put a a little bun in the oven? I'm like uh, the other guy that will just like come in a girl when she asks. Really? Is he sexual? (laughs) Yeah. So she's like, come inside of me, Taylor. And you're like, fucking okay. Yeah. I got bakery money. Let's do this shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, I'm straight. Ah! <laughs> ah! I love pussy. <laughs> you have an eight-year-old. Yep. My goodness gracious. Is his name Alibi? <laughs> <laughs> That's a legit name. Wow. And uh, does he live with his mom? Uh, n- primarily with me, yeah. He's with her on the weekends. Well, that's so cool. So he spends uh, mostly Monday through Fridays with you. Yeah. So you're a real fucking father. Hell yeah. That's incredible, dude. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> that's shocking. Because you look like a child. I mean, you seem very youthful. Yeah. So you have a kid. He's eight years old. Uh, what do you, you guys you do? Fun things with him? Oh uh, yeah, he's basically just like I would say a smaller version of me, but he's ba- he's just me. You know? Right. That's fucking awesome, man. That is so cool. What's the uh, what's the mom do? Um, I don't know at the moment. She's she just applied for a job somewhere okay. this weekend. So. Hell yeah. Whatever that is. Right. She's, uh, how did you end up with primary custody? She's a little bit of a party machine. She's a drinker. She cries after you come. <laughs> um, no, we're just like good friends. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And she's joint yeah. custody, pretty much. Hell yeah. Well, there yeah. you go. Absolutely. Man. Is there anything that the eight year old does that you, uh, that you can't stand about him? He rides the roller coasters you can't get on. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not mean... I've been hanging around Tony too much. I'm so sorry. My goodness gracious. Um, no, nothing that I can think of. Wow. Well, all right. Do you have any special skills or talents or anything like that? Um, you ever win an award for anything or get a trophy for something like that? No, definitely not the drums. Don't. No, but um, anything at all? I'm really good at League of Legends. Really good at what? League of Legends. It's oh, nerdy it's a, shit. You oh guys, God. You guys oh probably play. Oh, my yeah. God. I <laughs> love this man. Ah, looks like you might be hanging out with him and an eight-year-old <laughs> later tonight, Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Taylor, I mean, what can I say? This is, uh, is your first time doing stand-up? 
Oh, uh, yeah. Awesome, man. And uh, you got through it. You tried your absolute best. I'd say, you know, don't, you know, you started with an excuse. You know, this is my first time. I don't know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's one of the most fearful things someone can do other than saying, Pittsburgh sucks. I'm from Miami where there's beaches. I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, but uh, take it from me. You did better than the three guys from Miami did tonight. And it's... Uh, that's all you can really ask for. How about it? One more time for Taylor Lanier, everybody. All right, this is it. The moment that we've all been waiting for. This is the first ever great white sax off. Here he comes, the man with the sax. He has an actual fucking saxophone, and it is much bigger than Jeremiah's saxophone. Now, let me tell you, oh my God. Let me tell you, hold on, don't play it yet, don't play it yet. Come up here, come up here, come on up, keep coming. Uh, so this is the first ever great white sax off, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we, have, we have never had anything like this before. He is checking in on Jeremiah right now. This is as exciting as it gets. We've never done this before, uh, so perhaps I should uh, come up with the rules and explain them to you at the same time in my head. Um, so here we go. If, uh, remind me, I got a bunch of names here. Remind me one more time your name. My name is Lee Ebersol, and this song is called, uh, I Like Girls with Lazy Eyes because they're more approachable. All well, right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, dude. Hold on. Dude. Hold, hold, hold on. He's about to start playing. Uh, yeah. Lee, stick with me. Over here. Over he here, Lee. He does not know how to listen, does Lee, he? Lee, Lee, Lee. What this the fuck? This guy. <laughs> What's up? Lee, how's it going, buddy? I'm fine. I was checking out the competition. I've never seen a DAD that's so ADD at the same time. This is mind blowing to me. I've never seen a 70 year old attention deficit disorder guy before, but uh, somehow, so somehow so you I'm pull it off. I guess it looks, looks like Vietnam really fucked you up, huh? Vietnam. Vietnam. Vietnam, absolutely. So I guess if you win, you become the new saxophonist on the show, uh, full time. Would you be willing to move to Los Angeles? Uh, you would. Uh, okay. Well, here we go. You can do whatever you want right now with your big crazy saxophone. This is Lee Ebersol in the first ever Great White Sax Off. Was that not a good joke? Though? No, 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 it wasn't good, was it? They are communicating with each other. I'm not sure what's happening. I think they're trying to come up with some sort of plan right now. Uh, Lee. Lee? The song is called Draconio's Lament. Sure, just play something, Lee. No one gives a fuck what it's called. Was that, was that the name of your dragon? Lee. Draconio. Uh. All right, all right. <laughs> oh! Welcome to Pittsburgh. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. We got it. We got it. We got it. Lee Everson. So I own a saxophone. Yeah, I gotcha. Very good. Okay, now with uh, now his competitor, undefeated. Yeah, all, uh, Lee, Lee, put the Lee, put the, Lee, put the mic back in the mic. Okay. There can you I, go. Can, Come stand back here. Come stand back I, here. I saw the double dildo. I recognize. Very, very good. I cannot compete. Lee, you guys are Lee, very impressive. Stand, Lee, stand back here with Joel. Are you okay, buddy? Are you all right? Stand back here. Relax. Just relax. You want to play something on your saxophone and just isolate this thing real quick and then. We're going to bring it home. You can literally just play anything you want yeah. right now, and then yeah. we're all going to be oh, done yeah, with the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to tell you something real quick, if that's okay. Okay. I knew that something was up because his mouthpiece was completely upside down. Right. Very good. As well as the reed. <laughs> I want a second chance. Yep. Okay. okay. I did it. I did it's it. all good. It's okay. I didn't know that. We're going to get out of here as quickly as possible. He just has to play anything in the world on the saxophone, and this is going to be it. Maybe a little, uh, maybe a little classic we haven't heard in a while, or perhaps a brand new song. Literally anything can happen right now. And then a, we had fun here tonight, right? This guy's giving me merch. <laughs> oh, he's starting a clap. Oh shit, he knows how to work a fucking crowd. Look at that. 
shit. My goodness gracious, just unbelievable. Doesn't get any better than that. How many of you have Lee Ebersole winning that thing? How many of you have Jeremiah Watkins winning the first ever? Wow, unbelievable. This is Kill Tony Pittsburgh, and we did it. Happy 50th birthday to uh, my brother-in-law, Mike, over there. Happy birthday, buddy. Hello to my sisters in the audience. Hello to my friends, Jimmy, Jimmy, and all the other legends from Youngstown. Uh, at midnight tonight, it's another guy's birthday. It's the, it belongs to the one and only Jeremiah Watkins over here, huh? That's right. He's spending this birthday in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We have stuff for sale after this that we're willing to sign and take pictures with you with. The new Kill Tony, uh, this stretch of this tour poster that Ryan J. Ebelt cooked up himself just for you guys is for sale. We'll sign it for you. There's pins, including the Tony Hinchcliffe face pin, the legendary pin that I will uh, draw a mustache on if you want me to. Or you could have the clean-shaven Tony Hinchcliffe pin. The mustache is free. <laughs> uh, I draw it on myself. I even leave a little space in the middle right underneath the nose, uh, keeping it very realistic. Um, so, yeah, and, of course, the Kill Tony the Band Big Gay Calendar 2020 is on clearance. They're literally giving them away. Uh, for they are 33% off right now. <laughs> we have lots. <laughs> they are $20 now. <laughs> $20 each, the same price as the Kill Tony poster. There's also a Kill Tony shirt out there and some Death Squad patches right That's out right. there. That's um, right. So, uh, yeah, Jeremiah Watkins is a legend. It's his birthday tonight. Anything else, Jeremiah? Uh, yeah, could I see a couple uh, headlining dates? Sure. Real quick. Yeah. Uh, Kansas City, uh, Chicago. I'll be in Buffalo as well as Albany coming up. Uh, Detroit. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. JeremiahWatkins.com for tickets to those. Pittsburgh, how about one more time for the one and only Joelberg, Joel Jimenez. This guy's my second time here. I really do love it here. You guys are awesome. Hell Thanks for coming. yeah. So much fun. How exciting is this? Uh, yeah. We're in Cleveland tomorrow night. If anybody gets, uh, to gets antsy and is feeling up to it, make a drive, see us out there. Still a couple tickets available for that. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you after the show. We'll take pictures with you, sign your posters, anything else you want. Red Band? Thanks a lot, guys. Love you. We love you. Good night, everybody. Oh.